guys, it's just uh, dawn here. We're heading out to the 6170R and see if we can get this uh, three point freed up on this tractor. Uh, pulled the hitch cylinders off yesterday. I had a couple trackers I looked at for them. I had a 7320 with a bad lift pump. Anyway, uh, this hitch on this 6170R pulled the hitch cylinders loose from the rock shaft arms and the lift arms and the hitch still wouldn't go down and I got to looking at all the rust that was kind of oozing itself. You could see the rust streaks running down the rock shaft and the original paint was still on the greaser because they'd never greased the rock shaft. So anyway, we're going out there to mess with it some more, see if we can get it freed up. Hopefully we can work it up and down and not have to take the whole hitch apart to clean it all up. But there's old trouble with a bandage on his leg. He's a warrior. He wanted to go to work. He's doing just fine. So we got really lucky. It didn't cut any ligaments or tendons or anything like that. So he's doing just fine. Hopefully he's more careful and remembers not to climb up on them tractors. But anyway, uh, I don't know. I might video multiple things today. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Just I got that and I got that 6.7 that I need to get the rest of the way apart. I got to throw the hood and the side panels and all that stuff on that AC tractor. My front drive line showed up for my uh, Case International. So I uh, might be putting that together too. So I don't know. We got a lot of irons in the fire. So any mini money mo, pick what you want to do. So anyways, I'll be back with you out there at this John Deere. Okay. came out here and put this back on and took my caps and I had these caps ask them where my caps are
the long one.
whistling about something. Whistling, whistling, whistling.
more time.
So on this tractor here, they these guys actually have three of these tractors, these 6170Rs, and after I got done with this one, the same thing. The the other two tractors, I walked over and looked at them. And they didn't have it. They still had the green paint on the grease search too, and they never never greased them. They grease everything else, but I guess maybe I don't know. They didn't know these grease searches existed, but that's what was wrong with this. No grease. down back up to the planter uh, ask him where my caps are at son again tuck kind of pisses me off Uh, these things are always loading this data and loading that data. And where's the hitch position at? 8% it says. Well, let's go ahead and back up to that planter. Nipex pliers, I must have had them sitting on the tire or something. We get those. Hooked up. We'll see what we. I don't know. Let's see what we got. Ninety percent. That can't be right, can it? Potentiometer isn't right, or something's going on goofy here. Uh, let's go into your hitch. Let's see, if they got a raise rear hitch upper limit. Yeah, they've got it. Fucking, they've been in here dicking with it, as usual. It's usually what happens. I think it's going all the way, it's, it's going all the way up. 
since our we need to get our tilt it's not setting level okay let's let's mess with the center link a little bit Just work it back and forth with that grease in there. There now, yeah, now we're looking good. Greased up real, we got it greased up real good. I think, I think it'll be fine now that we just get it, just work it with that weight on there back and forth, and it'll free up. Yeah, there's a big lesson here: grease your rock shaft. percent right there yeah the cylinders are all the way up so she's all the way up make sure our keepers are in I gotta put that little cover back on there but Well, you just gotta grease this stuff every now and then. Guys, I thought I'd give you guys a little closure to this. <laughs> you know what works really good? Windex. Um, these manifold bolts, the intake bolts, I thought, you know, let's retorque those. This is that AC tractor we did the power director clutch and all that stuff. And the old guy that owns it, he said, just, you know, I don't need the tractor till the spring, so. This spring's here, so we gotta get her done, but... So, the intake manifold bolts were loose on it. So, I retorqued them all, and it still was doing that whistling noise. So, what I did, I pulled the ether injection part out of the intake manifold, took a rubber tip blow nozzle, and I know I, I, know I need to go make a special hose for this too, probably, but I squirted some WD-40 in there, Look at that. Can you see that? Look at the bubbles coming out there. The intake manifold needs to come off of it and be resealed. There is where our whistling is coming from. So, well, we'll start uh, draining some antifreeze out of it. Let me get this thing set right. There we go. Get this bull by tube off here out of the way. Let me go let Oscar out. Oscar's sniveling. Oscar. Alright, I'm coming, buddy. partner you just stay away from that antifreeze that's draining out of there don't be licking that up I 
Okay. So, let's see. Let's take the upper radiator hose off. Oscar, what are you doing, bud? Yeah, we're going to put in some longer hours now. I wasn't putting in really long hours, maybe 10-hour days in the winter time. It just pretty hard winter. For here it was, anyway. I know somebody's going to some come back from Canada and tell me it was 80 below zero there, but I know it's colder somewhere else on the planet. But it was cold for here. And it's just hard to, in that cold, and especially when, you know, this is an old building. For its time, it was insulated pretty good, but it's really, the insulation's coming out of the ceiling and stuff on it, and so it's just not so good anymore. And it's hard to put in them long hours when it's so damn cold. And I'll be honest with you, in the wintertime, I get so tired of feeding the damn heaters. It seems like that's all you ever get done is messing with the damn heater. You know, some kind of form of heat. You don't ever get anything else done. This seems really counterproductive. Now I'll say one thing for them guys that are in that cold country. You gotta be pretty, pretty tough to live in it year round. I'll them guys up in Alaska and stuff that deal with that I don't know, it's probably cold up there a good six, seven months out of the year. You can have it. <laughs> huh, Oscar. <laughs> now that's bolted. It's bolted there where it goes into the block too, or the cylinder head. We gotta get this water filter tube off. Let's turn this valve off here, which really shouldn't make any difference. It should be drained down. I'm trying to think the best approach to pulling that out of there. Well, we're not going to get down to those bolts back in there. It's going to have to come clear off. So. No, that was that. Remember that uh, Remember that ISX Cummins I in framed? He, he, that was the truck I in framed. He was hauling strawberry diggers back from low elevation from Manteca back to McDowell. I seen him pulling in with a digger on the back. His dad owns a freight liner. Uh, what are that? Cascadia 09 and. I went over there the other day because he said that he, he does a lot of his own work, his dad does. And said it wouldn't start and after he had put a water pump in it. And I said, well, that's a little odd. He said, yeah, I don't know why that's doing that. It's kind of weird. Well, I went over there and I couldn't get my taxi unit to communicate with it. And Anyways. Got to go back over. There's something going on with the CAN bus or something or the ECM in it. Not sure yet what yet. I couldn't get anything to communicate with it. I've got a ProLink too, and uh, for uh, it's an older ProLink for Detroit. I couldn't get it to do anything on it either. a little bit of water trapped below the thermostat or something. Oh, I like some of the comments. Every once in a while you'll get one on there that some guy says, you talk too much. 
and especially some of the videos where you're actually explaining what you're doing and how something works or how something operates and I mean what do you want a, you want a silent video or I don't know and I need to start some of the some of the guys have asked me for uh, for captions on there for guys that don't under, know English I need to learn how to do that because I really don't even know how to do it to be honest with you so I got to figure that out 5.8 socket Oh, be damned, they have a nut behind them. I'll be damned. That's going to be an in wrench. Right here on that one. Hey, knock it off, Oscar. Oscar! Oscar, quit. Every little noise, you don't need to bark, okay? You've been at home with Mama too much. There's a lot of noises around here. And he's just not used to the banging and clanging and all the shit going on over in this area. Well, this thing's kind of a pain in the ass. Why they got that bolted in there? Why didn't... What a pain in the ass. Or do I just take these two off? Right here, and maybe that's easier. I see. They got a two bolt bracket bolting into the block, and then I... Oh my shit, and God. Oh! a never-ending antifreeze drain. <laughs> I'll stick a piece of cardboard over the front axle and kind of divert the water. Another one of those things that, you know, they stuck it right over the axle with no drain tube or anything associated with it, and it just goes everywhere. off of here and reseal it and fire it back up and try to get rid of our whistle. There, now we got that where we can get that off of there. We'll just leave that alone like that for now. 
Oscar, I don't want to step on you, bud. Watch out. Okay, what do we do our nut wrenching, nut wrecking spanner? We want to get that back on there. Take the manual gauge. See? Anyways, I went out there this morning. Seventy-three twenty had an engine stoplight on and all that kind of stuff when you started it, and because it was just <clears throat> running off the mechanical, you know, the VP forty-four was the one pulling the fuel in because the electric one. I went over there with my hand and slapped the electric lift pump, and it kicked. Kind of, you, know, you could hear it try to kick on, and it wouldn't run, and. And they've got one over at their shop and I, I jumped in my service truck and came back over here and got one from their mechanic over here and went back out there and stuck it on and I see that's an ear on the intake manifold so that does have to come clear off and so we got one two two bolts there all right Oscar what are you doing bud Huh? Let's take this bracket off where the AC compressor used to mount. Start unbolting the intake on her. What did I do with the 916 socket? I laid it in the tool cart. I sure did. Yeah, these were loose when I checked them. I knew that I couldn't get lucky enough to just have them, you know, seal back up. Let me get the tool cart closer to throw these manifold bolts in there. Then the old Marmon dump truck showed up out there. He's got something, I don't know if he's got a brake cam over. He's got a wheel sill out on the right rear drive axle. But I mean, you release the brakes and boy, if something drags, I mean, you'll get the brakes to release and you'll, the clutch needs to be adjusted bad on it. But you, you get going with it and you can push in on the clutch and it stops itself. So there's something dragging pretty bad. Them old Mormons, man, they were hellacious log trucks, really tough trucks. I don't need that draining anymore. We're gonna start spending some long hours in here. The weather's kind of finally straightened up a little bit. And um, get some of these diesel pickups. I need to get that 6.4 power stroke, get the cab off of it, put a high pressure pump in it. Got the high pressure pump in that one, but it needs full set of injectors too because that metal went through everything. So, uh, let's see here. We got to get this thing loose now. Okay. Let's pull, 
pull this panel off right here. That's not gonna happen. Never mind with that. I gotta get this thing broke loose up here. I saw a few left one of their trucks and cat on the back of it and everything yeah and that's them leaving right now but they wanted me to go look at it for them because their mechanic called me from I think they're out of Hollister I think Okay, these are, I can't believe this is the dealer. The dealer used orange Permatex silicone to put. To put it together. Yeah, that's the dealer. He said that the dealer inframed the engine on it. And they put Permatex on it. Okay. That's 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 not right. <laughs> but then they didn't look, see, they they never got the intake manifold gasket on their right. Look at it. From the get go. Because here it's siliconed on here. See where the gasket walks off? Look what they did. Here's what they did, guys. They doubled up the gaskets. They were so lazy. <laughs> they were so lazy. That they couldn't clear the original gasket off. So they put this one on here. And look at this. Look at this. This is all silicone on it. This is done from the very beginning. What a shitty, shitty job. He he was telling me about this thing. Well, we got the intake manifold all resealed, let her set all night and set up that anaerobic sealer. I had to take it, drain the water back out and take this tube off. It was leaking here, one of them rubber bushing o ring type things. And hopefully we got that sealed up. Let's fire it up and make sure we have no leaks. And then we'll put the hood on, the step and all that stuff back on there. And she can come and get her, hopefully.
the tractor with that rear main. Make sure it ain't leaking. that intake manifold on there the problem with that is when that right now it's not so bad because it's you know under load like this it's that turbo's pushing but when it's just sitting there idling it's sucking it's sucking dirt into the intake and you're dusting the motor sound good don't they see I think he's already got problems with that engine because he's got quite a bit of blow by they probably ruined his engine when they didn't get their intake gaskets on there right anyway well thought I'd show you a short video of just the finalization of the uh, you know I remember I left off this winter, uh, last winter here, I did the power director clutch and and we had that intake leak and I parked it outside and we had nothing but just 
snow and rain and snow and rain and the owner came by and he said oh hell just when the weather clears up start working on it again i just i didn't want to do anything out there but uh we got our intake manifold leak fixed and he should be good to go now